No Simple Road. Yeah, here we go. One of our favorite sponsors is back with us, Sunset Lake CBD. CBD. Yeah. If you're looking for CBD that actually does what CBD is supposed to do, look no further than our friends over at Sunset Lake. Let me break it down. Break it down, Mel. They're sustainably farmed, meaning they avoid pesticides and use sustainable farming practices to preserve the land for future generations. One. Two, farm to table. They ship the CBD products straight from their door in Vermont directly to your door, wherever you're at. Oh, that's cool. And third party tested. They test everything with the third party to ensure quality, dosage, and safety. You got to go over and check out sunsetlakecbd.com. They have so many products. Break it down for them, Apple. Well, they've got some new stuff going on. Like, they, they always had pre-rolls, but now they got really cool packaging for it. And you can get CBD pre-roll flights of all their flavors. You can get the heavy hitter flight that also throws in some of their Keef blunts. They have a new CBD recovery body lotion. I'm excited about that. Mm-hmm. And what was the other? The, the other one with Arnica. Yeah. Extra strength muscle rub, 3,000 milligram with 5% lidocaine. So look, oh yeah, lidocaine. if you're sore, this is the stuff you want to rub on your body to make those aches and pains go away. They even have CBD infused coffee. So you can have coffee without the little jitter that you get from caffeine and you have it in the morning and you start your day off right. Your body feels lubricated. Or you're, you know, you're going to sleep good. Yeah. It's- and also they have... If you kind of forget to reorder, they've got subscriptions. And they're giving the No Simple Road family 20% off. 20% off. Put in the promo promo code code NSR20 when you're checking out at sunsetlakecbd.com. You're going to get 20% off your entire order. NSR20. And don't forget those cute little gummy bears. That's right. Sunsetlakecbd.com. One of our favorite sponsors is back. going to tell me if Mr. Krabs is feeling it or not? Mr. Krabs is probably feeling it. He's always feeling it. So is Captain Compost. (laughs) Who's Captain Compost? Ace Ventura. If you know, you know. All right. Hey, no. No Simple Road family. We are back (laughs) with another edition of the No Simple Road Weekly Rewind, brought to you in collaboration with the Edible Beats out of Denver, Colorado. And if you know, you know. If you don't, go find out. Google Edible Beats, and you're going to be taken on a journey through coolness. There's a lot to know. Yep. And you want to know something really cool about the Edible Beats? Mm. We are performing from one of their restaurants mm. on um, August 30th. Yeah, that's the month. August 30th. Wednesday. With Andy Frasco's World Saving Podcast, we're doing a ooh, live taping ooh, of ooh. both of our shows. There's going to be special guests. That's right. And tickets actually are on sale now for Ophelia's Electric Soapbox. No what? Simple Road. Andy Frasco, you can go to Ophelia's Electric Soapbox on the internet or you can go to at No Simple Road and click the link in the bio and buy yourself some tickets and come hang out with us. It's the day before the Dicks run. You know you're already going to be there. You should do something fun the night before. To it's get yourself one hell of a night. Lubed up, and greasy and ready Andy to go. Andy Frasco, <laughs> No Simple Road, special guests. Maybe some fun musical accompaniment. We don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what's going to happen. There's a lot. I still don't even know what we're going to talk about. Good. (laughs) And it's going to be awesome as always. That's right. Sure. We didn't know what we were going to talk about at fair. Mm -mm. Well, yeah, we did. Are we home from fair now? Yeah. No. Well, no. We're home from fair. Are we? Well, actually... Um, um, the spirit, fair, the spirit is still to, happening. Mel and I, I haven't taken our wrist on. That's right. I'm leaving it on till it falls off. Yep. <laughs> yeah. For real. So when we went over to Jack, what, no, when they came, they still had their wristbands on from the year before. Yeah, and I, I noticed it, and um, and we asked him about it, and Dan said it symbolizes that fair doesn't end until you take the wristband off. So I'm gonna leave it on until I get the next wristband. So yep. fair never ends. Okay. Yeah. I'll just keep it alive in my head. (laughs) 
<laughs> is you it, definitely is it alive in your head, Apple? It is, is alive. It? it is alive zombie, in my head. Zombie. <laughs> I, 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 yeah. There's a lot of the ferret will be alive in my head for a long time. Well, everybody, we are back. And yeah, we skipped a week in the No Simple Road uh, time continuum because fair was such an extravaganza and we absolutely needed the time that it took to come back to ourselves, come back down to Mars, you know, that kind of like anchoring back into our bodies and, and also kind of like, holy shit, we just went to fair and all that, everything that it meant like amongst ourselves. Plus also a lot of non-talking too, just kind of integrating everything that happened at the fair. So we're, I'll say we're, we're sorry this week. We're sorry we didn't get you an episode, but we definitely couldn't have done it any other way. No, there was absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So even when I mentioned it to Aaron, like the next day, I was like, let's just do it. And you're like, no. <laughs> yeah. Like you were usually like, all right, you're, you're kind of right. We should get it out. You were like, no, I couldn't. <laughs> it is not time. I literally <laughs> had nothing in the tank. Like, and, and you know how I am. I'm like, I want to get it out so I don't forget. <laughs> you're, you're not like, going to forget fair. No, no. I'm, you know, it's sometimes you just are a little bit more passionate closer to the event, you know, but this definitely needed some dust to settle down. Yeah, this and, doesn't wear off. Uh-uh. <laughs> no. So for those of you that are like, cool, you went to a country fair. <laughs> Rad. Was there Ferris wheels and balloons? <clears throat> no. <clears throat> That is not what the Oregon Country Fair is. The Oregon Country mm-hmm. Fair uh, uh, is the longest running acid test in human history. According to Aaron. Yeah. And, and, and others. I heard other people saying the same thing. Okay. Um, this is the wildest, coolest, most creative feat of psychedelic human engineering on the planet, bar none, period. You, if you've been to a music festival... And you've seen people on stilts, glow in the dark shit in the middle of the night, drum circles, um, uh, puppet shows, crazy things happening in the campground. You have fair to thank for all of that. Fair has been going on for 50, I think this was the 52nd year of the Oregon Country Fair. And uh, yeah, 20,000 volunteers make the fair happen. There are, I think I heard there was 12 12. paid positions or something like that in fair. Everybody else that works for fair does it out of love and wanting to see this thing happen every year. So that's 20,000 weirdos dedicated to this, to the cause. (laughs) And then when they open the gates to the public, another 20 plus thousand people come. So it is, the fourth largest city in Oregon while the fair is happening. And then when it ends, it is completely dismantled and not a trace is left. It is mind boggling that this level of ingenuity and, and working together can happen. I'm talking entire fire crews, that fire department, uh, refrigeration crew that has warehouses that are refrigerated for cold storage for food stuff. Um, a water crew that handles anything that has to do with water for 20,000 people. When we found out about a night watch crew, yep. that keeps yep. an eye on things at night to make sure everything's safe for fire dangers, just all kinds of things. And like and that's I said, not including, you know, vendors yeah. and, you know, not security so much, but like, information and you know medical attention and yeah we'll get to medical music attention. and stages and, and, and each camp there's a bunch of different camps at night and then they're responsible for their own crews for kitchen and clean up oh yeah. and all the, i mean just the amount massive of work that goes into it and everybody doing it with a smile 99.9 percent of the time because they oh. this is the thing like the incentive is the party the incentive is the freedom the community and the community and what's going to happen in between the hours of 7 p.m and 11 a.m yeah well and also when it's open to the public yeah too. when it's open to the public of course that's fun and great and whatever but like you got to explain that to people they don't understand what you're talking about well you know there's uh, again 
it's hard to kind of understand what a country fair is because when the minute you say fair, you want to think about goats and skee ball and you know, that those merry go round. Yeah, Come on, boy, uh, give it a try. 50 and, cents to play, 50 cents to win. Yeah. But like, and fairs, it does have its own clowns and like costumes mm. and things yes, like that. So there's a, a few similarities, but, but this is like something that, like a renaissance fair in the sense that like there's you know all these people that have are artisans that are have these booths and created these gorgeous storefronts and put their product that they've worked all year long to bring to the fair everything there has to be handmade too yeah everything's there handmade and there's so many different things that are like you know a fairy wing store and a little miniature puppet store and a leather smith and a a shoe smith and you know uh, enchiladas and (laughs) you know juicing and like all these different types of things it's its own world world it's its own city so during the day opening up at 11 o'clock it's open to the entire public and so you can come and pay however much you pay and it was was, yeah it was 45 dollars and then um you know then there's also selling uh three-day passes um so you go in and you you interact there's a phone or a photo booth you can take a picture all these things there's stages with entertainment yeah classes being done there's this thing called electric park and you can find out about new and innovative waves energy park yeah energy park yeah not electric but um and then but there's all these different things that you can do to participate in the daytime country fair experience and then at the end of the evening there's a, a sweep crew that goes through and literally from one end of the um fair to the other end, they hold art. They go arm in arm and sweep everybody out that doesn't have the that's wristband. That's not volunteering. Yeah, that's not volunteering. Um, and they sweep them right on out, take them out of the fair, and okay, so now everything's done. Say it's eight o'clock. It's taken them one hour. I don't know how long it took them, but they are swept everybody out. It's totally over well, and done with. There's now, a whole thing with sweep too of like people trying to hide. Well, from sweet to be able to stay in fair. And, and the reason you want to stay in fair is because then there's a whole entire night fair that occurs. That's not open to the that's public. That's not open to the public. That's open to the 20,000 volunteers. And the 20,000 volunteers are the ones that are putting it on. And they're ready to party. They're ready to party. They've been on working in their booths all day. Or they've been helping with being a medic or helping, you know, information booth, whatever they were doing. And now you can let your hair down put your funky er costume on for the day mm-hmm. <laughs> or for the night, I should say, and then just get lost in the acres and acres upon acres. How many acres are the grounds? Yeah, like around two. I, I don't know if that includes the parking lots or anything, but it's like 200 plus acres. Yeah. So I wonder how much the eight is. I, 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 I don't, don't know. know. We don't have the, the it, uh, it, answers to that. It, it's right huge, now. though. I mean, it is gigantic. Yeah, it's and, massive. And the cool thing that once the night party starts is like the daytime performers that are geared t- more towards the children, like one of our favorites, oh my gosh. Booble the Dragon, does a kid show during the day and then at night turns into Fubal. the night nighttime <laughs> Fubal and doing performances along the side for for the grown-ups it and, is the craziest shit and it's well, and it's I- so big the first night we were there like mel and i and apple had been walked around the grounds during the day thursday before the fair had ever opened and shown like this is the eight the eight is like the main part of the fair it's a big figure eight where all the vendors and food and all that the main stage all that stuff is and then at the bottom end of it are two meadows there's shayla mela and xanadu and that's like the newest parts of the fair and we walked around and we saw how to like get from everywhere back to our camp and whatnot and then on that thursday night mel and i went to go take a walk by ourselves and ended up down in shayla mela and could not find our way back. <laughs> like we we were continually stuck in this loop of we would turn a corner. I'd be like, "Fuck, this is where Deja we just vu. were ten minutes ago." And she'd be like, no, "Okay, we got to go this way." And we'd turn to the left this time. And sure enough, we're back by this fucking trippy wall again. Here we are, can't find our way out. And then you ask people, and they're 
just as lost as you are. And <laughs> Think, or if they know where they're telling you to go, that's not what you hear. You yeah. don't. <laughs> they'll tell you direct, you know, directions, and then two seconds later, you're like, "What did he say?" I was literally <laughs> not scared, but like hesitant to go back into that part of fair at night because I couldn't find my way out the first night. <laughs> I was like, "I'm staying in the eight. I know my way around up here." So it, it's bigger and crazier than anything that you're imagining right now. And I really do feel like the Oregon Country Fair outside of the Pacific Northwest is the best kept secret that we're telling on right now. Yeah, I, f- I feel like we we shouldn't be telling because it's definitely a, still a, a huge secret because people that have lived here for years have never gone. They st- like they. Oh, yeah, we've heard about it. It's one thing to hear about it. It's another thing to participate in it. It's a whole organization. If you've ever looked at ants from above and saw them like working, like, you know, taking like one tiny little piece of sugar and then moving it into, and then like all of them are doing the same thing. That's what fair seemed like the, the most beautifully organized um, union of people that I've ever seen work that way. Like, yeah, man. And, and it, it, go ahead, Apple. Well, I just say one of the coolest things about it too is this is like like very close family. It was like a huge family reunion because there's people that started out going in the early 70s and stuff like that who are still there with now two, three generations yep. that have grown up with it and love it just as much and are so proud to be there and proud to talk about so many people to talk about like, the, you know, my, my grandpa was here at the original one and then my parents and now me and they, and they grow up in it and are so proud to return and be part of it and see all of their fair family. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was just a huge family reunion everywhere. Everybody was so welcoming and just, it was, it was beautiful. It felt so safe there as a performer. Um, you know, people, wait their whole life want their whole life to have the opportunity to perform at fair if they've heard of it if they've heard of it and and uh for us to be brought in by dan jackie and the spoken word crew the way we were was i hope you all are understanding like the um gravity and the huge honor that that was to do what we do for that particular group group of people i didn't understand it until the end of fair i i i, I, I knew I, what was going down but the, I, the weight like of it was you impressed were saying on the gravity yeah. i i did not understand the gravity i knew that it definitely i felt like once we got there i was like whoa what an honor to be to have been invited to do this but then at the end of it i was like whoa we just we're in like what we were a part of that's a year that some people's first fair that they've ever been to. Mm-hmm. And that will be etched in their core memory for a fair, for a fair and in their life, like forever. We got to be a part of that. Yeah. And our part was good. I felt like we really did fair justice. I feel like us going down there and telling our story and interviewing LP, no matter how many people were there or not, like we sprinkled our no simple road selves there and it was received well and it blessed a lot of people because the people that came up to me after and talked about it, it, we got across what no simple road does. Yes. And, and just so you understand, like, for 52 years there has been psychedelic journeying on this land and it is imbued with that vibration with the power and the weirdness and the random magic of the psychedelic space is like fused with the place itself they they are the same thing and to be asked by that to do what we do is huge. And then to go there and receive the welcome that we got and the 
camaraderie and the friendships that we made while we were there. It's, I was thinking about this when I, when we got in the car to leave fair, I was thinking about like, you know, they say when you die, your whole life plays before you like yeah. that weekend is something that I want them to play slow. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, you don't want it to yeah. be flashes. Of- I want that to like, I want to savor that one when I'm going out. It's definitely like a highlight of my life mm-hmm. for the rest of my life to know that we got to do that. Yes. And it, it it's an extension of the Grateful Dead and Mary Prankster family that has kept the fires burning in the forests in Oregon, not literally figuratively for these many years. And it's our family, man. It, it, it really did feel like going home. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Especially by, by the time we'd gone through everything and the Sunday night in our camp, oh. when we, when we sat for a, for hours in the circle that was in the middle to watch Fubal the Dragon, which we had, we had seen little bits of like walking by during the day, but we were you know doing things and on duty yeah, being to do our show. Fair, yeah, and we were so I remember we were like three little kids when when it was announced that Fubal was setting up in our camp <laughs> to perform I, for the children and the adults and to have a talent kids show. talent show <laughs> and also an adult <laughs> talent show. It was the greatest thing ever. Everybody, it had been five days, so everybody was ready to Mellow. like sit and relax <laughs> and watch the kids. And it felt so welcoming. Like, like when you're there, when people know it's your first fair, like, everybody's kind of keeping an eye on you just to see your reactions yeah. and your face and, and to see what you do as far as pitching in and helping out with yeah, stuff. Like how and, do you mix in with being, this community? Yeah. And being familiar, being family. And by Sunday night sitting there, it, it felt so comforting yeah. and just beautiful, kind of like basking in the glow of five days of taking in all, I mean, the sights and the sounds that happened over the five days. So, um, fair was from Friday to Sunday and, uh, Dan and, and Jackie, we met them Thursday morning cause we had to go Thursday to get our camp set up. And, uh, we met them Thursday morning at like nine 45 and we carpool down to, to Vanita and, uh, we get down there and we're, we pull into the lot and <clears throat> imagine like a theme park parking lot full. That's what this was like already. And this was not open to the public yet. This is just the volunteers. <laughs> and so we park in this parking lot and we walk over to where they're giving out like credentials and wristbands and stuff like that. And this is already like a whole thing that's happening. There's maybe 30 different, signs that, that for each crew there's like a spoken word booth and a fire crew elders, elders crew yeah. um the water crew entertainment ambience crew so you we go up to the spoken word thing and uh, we give our names and we get our our credentials and stuff and they're they're like um is this your first fair? And we were like, yeah, it's our first fair. So they're, they're like, woo fair virgins <laughs> and everybody's cheering for us and that was really cool. And then, uh, and it was so organized. Totally. We walked up there and we had everything done within a few minutes. Oh, yeah. and meal Easy. voucher. Everybody gets meal vouchers for being there performing or working. And it, because we've gone to a lot of things where you go, we go to get our passes or something and they got to get somebody on the radio. Nobody knows that this was so Dialed smooth. In. Couldn't believe it. Totally. And so they're like, okay, so here's the deal. Um, you're going to, we're going to have a golf cart follow you guys. That was my favorite part. In your car (laughs) to, to the main parking lot. And I'm like thinking, holy shit. Like there's another parking lot that's bigger than the parking lot that we're in. They're like, yeah, they're going to, they're going to follow you in a golf cart to, to your real parking spot. And, And the name of the lot that we were going to was dead lot. And, uh, and then you're going to load all of your equipment and 
tents and food and all that stuff onto the golf cart. And this is not like a four wheel drive farm golf cart. This, no, it's this, a regular this golf, is a golf course, golf cart. And uh, they're like, yeah, so they're going to, we're going to load everything onto the golf cart and then they're going to give you guys a ride to camp. And I'm like, okay. So we wait a little while. The golf cart comes, we follow them out to the parking lot and Thank we're driving you, Justin. out. Justin was the coolest we're driving out to the parking lot. And it, and Doug, it's like row after row after row after field after field after row. And then through the trees into another lot of row after row. Our, our row was like 500 something. Yeah, like, it was insane. The amount of cars park. We get all our stuff loaded onto this golf cart like a clown car. There's the three of us. So we nailed it. We killed it. <laughs> Two tents melanized air mattress like all of our backpacks and food and our sound equipment and all of our shit mel's standing on the back of the golf cart standing up <laughs> hell yeah i was holding on to the top to the roof standing up and then you know you have you cannot just like stand up straight you have to bend your knees and you have to like surf it because if you're st- stick straight then you're gonna hurt your knees because it was bumpy oh AF. yeah you, it was so in bumpy field in the middle of and, and me and aaron couldn't do it me and aaron were enough that we would have made it probably Flip made it almost backwards. pop a wheelie <laughs> yeah, i remember justin was like you guys need to get up front to balance the weight and so the me apple and our new friend justin all get in the front of the golf cart <laughs> And I'm surfing the Mel's back. surfing the back and off we go to our camp, which was Alice's Wonderland. And uh very appropriate. And it's a drive. What do you think? It's a couple miles. It was a yeah, it was long a, drive. at least a couple of miles it, yeah. to the camp. Yeah. So the camp is like off we're in this like we start off in the parking lot, which is just a huge empty field. And I, I think somebody told me that the field that we were in was where the Vanita shows were. Which would make sense of it Why being it's called, called the dead lot. But anyway couple of miles or more in the golf cart with three of us all the way back into the forest like into the most wooded beautiful area you've ever it was seen so cute and there's camps like think about when you've gone camping and there's like the areas where people rent camp sites there's these kind of camps all over the place with different names there's like easy camp and otter camp and miss piggies and whatever <laughs> and ours is alice's wonderland that's where spoken word camp is and we pull up and uh justin's like all right we're gonna unload all your stuff onto this mat and then we're gonna get with laura and she's gonna help you guys find a place for your tent and uh we unload Laura comes over. We introduce ourselves. First time we've ever met. She takes us over to where Dan and Jackie are. And our tents are literally touching theirs under the most beautiful apple tree. Yeah. Canopy. <laughs> it was like. I remember the, Dan was like, you feel it. You feel at home, Apple. <laughs> and just this big smile. Like they, they couldn't wait. Like so many things that they had in store. And then like, like check this out just to watch the looks on our face and yeah oh my it god was, i want that apple tree everywhere i go like i said it was like an umbrella it it was so beautiful and you know it, dan and and jackie dan is is from peak experience if you are familiar with the string cheese incident and the hornings hideout the world famous hoardings hideout incidents with cheese that happened there dan is the brains behind the peak experience and uh, the crew that did all of the um, crowd interaction stuff at all the cheese shows back in the day. So this is the cat that invited us to fair and made sure we got in. And so we we're camping with them. Now we have our own little area and we're, we're ready to like, we set our stuff up and we're ready to like take in fair and, mm-hmm. and go get some food actually is, was like the first yeah. thing that we did. And uh, so we got a tour from them that first day. Well, for, for first, when we set up camp too, we were like, we we meet this angel oh, wow. of a person can't that's in our camp. That, I set up my tent right next to her, and we both realize we have the exact same tents, mm-hmm. and are like, oh, we're we're tent twins. Hey, and you guys were too intense, and we, and we we thought that uh, 
that she knew Dan and Jackie very well and everything, and it ended up no. she just she was in she our did camp. Not know no, she, no, I know. Yeah, we okay. thought. Oh, okay. Yeah, listen. Oh, I know, yeah. <laughs> Two ears, one mouth. What? And, but a- Amy was just amazing, and uh, again, found another sister in our lives, and Meeting she did. Her. What was it that she did in the morning? It, it was like song the, circle, the song circle, community and, singing, which we made sure to get down to every day. Oh, we missed one it, day. Did, did it, we? It was the coolest yeah, hippie worship Saturday. moment ever. It was like a whole group of people first thing in the morning. Well, first thing in the morning is 11 a.m. 11. Yeah. <laughs> first thing in the morning. Yeah, it started when it opened to public so and, public could catch their performance. Um, Amy and the other ladies leading song Kira. and teaching it to the crowd and everybody singing together yeah so we were in the band everybody was in the band amy's voice was on another level first of all she looked so unassuming and then she picked up that guitar or tapped on that cojon and she sounded like an angel That's a warrior woman right there. she was a warrior she was an angel she was a pleasure like and, meeting her and she was also elevated a comedian. yeah she's hilarious when she did the different voices while singing it oh was my so gosh. funny and cool. she, her whole thing is to like be rad and bring music to the people yeah. like make having like uplifting affirmations through music that really like as you sang it you felt it and so you began emoting it and and then you started feeling it yeah like, she, it, she what she does is amazing and stay tuned for a future episode with her we're definitely going to get her on like she's such a positive like force yeah for sure so we're uh we're all set up we go we grab some food we go got we went and got enchiladas and sat in the main in the meadow at main stage which is like hallowed ground like chris robinson brotherhood have played there phil lesh and friends have played there like anything for the grateful dead world musically that you could think of has happened in this meadow that we're sitting in. People are just hanging out and having lunch and having fun and talking and laughing and people on stilts and clowns and the weather's literally perfect. Mind you still hasn't opened to the public. No. And it already looks like fair is happening. Oh yeah. And uh, we spent the next what day and a half just getting to know our surroundings because we didn't perform Friday. Yeah, we had, um, we got there Thursday early afternoon. So we had that whole afternoon and evening. Then Friday fair opens at 11. So we kind of just walked the fair on, on Friday and we just looked around and, uh, went back to camp and we just kind of like was a free day and it was really great to, to kind of have that before get our sea legs. Yeah. To just kind of see what the fair was about. To, it's overwhelming. It really is. And also to be able to speak to it too on Saturday, because now we, okay, we had one full day and kind of a quarter of a day because we performed at 2.30 on Saturday to speak to the fair and to talk about a little bit of our experience and, and just to, you know, I don't know, just like find our way around. So one of the things that people told us not to miss is this thing called the Ritz. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> You know, it, when you think of like showering at a festival, like at the best of times, it's gross. Like, no, that's not my thought. When I think about showering, I, I have that good. Uh, well, it's, you, you it's don't, not, you never know. It's not cool. <laughs> like, most of the time, you better have flip flops on. It's going to be a little weird. You know what I mean? It, but this area that they've built at Fair called the Ritz, aptly is, named. It really <laughs> aptly named is the most insane hippie bathing thing I've ever seen. All like reclaimed redwood decks with beautiful cubbies to put your stuff in. Um, maybe a hundred different outdoor showers that were in a communal space and it's very um, European drying fires for you to go stand by the fire after you're done taking your outdoor hot shower. That was the water was warmed by wood fires and gravity fed water from a glacier and even an indoor sauna that's big enough for maybe a hundred people. You think 
I don't 50, know, but 100, 60. but yeah, a good amount, put it that you can way. You go sit in the sauna, so you pay 12 bucks as a, as a volunteer, you pay $12 to go in, and you could spend as long as you want in the Ritz. Go take a shower, go get a sauna, go sit by the fire, relax. Get ready. Rejuvenate yourself. There's sinks and mirrors and like. They had the, what was it, the cold plunge fish? Yeah. Yeah. Did you pull the thing to get. Right and they even you had a out. band. Bands also played <laughs> the night. Ritz. So the first night that Aaron and I, or the first day that I, Aaron and I went, I should say, morning. it was Friday as we were leaving, there was a band like getting ready to play. So as early as afternoon shows all the way to the end of the evening, uh, family mystic closed out fair on Sunday night at the Ritz. And so you have music, you've got cleanliness, water, uh, hydrotherapy, like all. And, you know, whether you favor nudity or not, whether you don't care about it or not, it did not become a thing. No. At first, Aaron, I, well, I'll be, yeah. At first, Aaron and I were just like a little bit awkward about it. And then like five minutes in, it's like, who gives a shit? You're the one being awkward. Yep. <laughs> it's not yes, awkward. Don't here. Make it weird, you're man. the one being awkward. And then I was like, you know, I, I, I started to realize I'm like, what do I mean? Who cares? Yep. Who cares? It's so freeing. It is very liberating. Yeah. It's very freeing. And it was a really, really fun we experience. We went to the Ritz every day. I we didn't. Were there. Oh, you didn't go on the no. last day? No, I went. I, I took a shower at our camp. Oh, that's I right. Just, I just went Saturday morning. and it Well, because of that line, I was going to wait in camp. And Mel had been sitting. You'd been sitting there for a while. Yeah. And, it took me an hour to and get a shower. Aaron, he's like, he's like, dude, just fucking do it. Just go to you the need Ritz. To we were here to experience everything. And I went. And I had the same thing. Kind of like little off guard because i've never been a nudist i've never been around that other than like a few naked people here or there at something and walked in and was just kind of off kind of the same thing like aaron amelda said i quickly realized that's like you're the one making it weird mm -hmm. by being weird and with the, within a couple minutes you're just you're in there just like everyone else you're taking showering. a shower with your family and then i was like like almost was like kind of in a hurry at first like okay i'm gonna you got a task. Get clean. <laughs> get clean. Get, get dry. Get I did the same thing. Get dressed and get out of here. You know this is not your thing. And within with, within five it's minutes of thing. showering, I noticed a, a guy I'd met the day before, older guy was standing over by the uh, fire drying circle, and he just kind of kind of like like nodded at me and like like come over here. I, I he could see the kind of awkwardness in my face. It's like and I'm like. All right, threw my towel in the cubby and just went over and stood around naked, chatting with people for a while, and it was so nice. Draw, you know, drying by when the people fire. People don't make a big deal about nudity. Fucking it nudity. really is fucking nice. Yeah, and like, and, and I nice. noticed too. Everybody's and be like, everybody that's drying, everybody's. It's like eye contact, talking mm -hmm. to each other because yeah. you, you know you yeah. don't want to be disrespectful. I mean, there's <laughs> there's kids and yeah. teens and everything I in don't there. Think so. Yeah, there was. I didn't see kids I didn't when we see were kids there. In there. There was there was kids yeah. when I was there. There was a couple kids, but the like whole family was right at the spigot next to me. Oh, okay. a mom and dad, and probably like about a six seven year I'm old. I remember. And yeah, it was it was every everybody, and and it was like okay that by by the end of it, it was like this is so fucking cool, and I felt so clean. Yeah, yeah. It was it was so comforting, and then and then. You go out, and they had me covered because dipshit me. I left my towel on my bed, so I go there with no towel. They you can rent a towel, and you know, they got you covered. Yeah, they got you covered. You, you could go and have forgotten everything, and it's going to cost you a few bucks, but they got you covered. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it this isn't like makeshift. This it is, is like solid, beautiful. Yeah, this is like one of the most beautiful. <laughs> places spas you've ever been in and it's in the middle of the forest built by a bunch of heads it's so dope it's one you of my know, favorite the, things the, at, the, at, at fair the thing that weaved throughout the entire fair was the magnitude of what people can do with cooperation like yeah, the, the grandeur of it and and like down to the details and the organization like like you were talking about picking up our, our like credentials and stuff like that. And mm -hmm. we had all of our, um, our food vouchers in there. We had just everything that we needed from who was going to help to where, who like to what to do next. To exactly. Yep. And I, 
I just was so proud to be a part of that. I, I think it's amazing when people work together and create something beautiful. And, and let's talk for a minute about our camp about spoken word crew. Mm, and Laura and Leah, these two Look, women that, and Amber. We pull into camp and from back at summer meltdown in 2019, mm-hmm. I see Leah, who was our liaison at summer meltdown. And I'm like, and she was amazing then. I looked at her and I was like, holy shit, we know each other. Like, oh my God. And so the spoken word crew has been doing their thing at fair for time immemorial. And this is a very tight Knit. family mm-hmm. within the family. Mm-hmm. And I could tell at first they were like, okay, hey, welcome. Like they wanted to see how we were going to. That's so normal for everybody. Totally. You know, like you, you come to someone's house and you're just, you know, you've got your, every, you're not as comfortable yet. Yeah. You know, you have to see how comfortable you are. You can like let your hair down in someone's space. But we had received like all the information from them beforehand on what to do, where to go, what to bring, what to bring. And look. Every single morning from 6 a.m. until 10 a.m., the spoken word crew makes sure that the family is fed for the morning and has coffee. There's coffee, coffee and oatmeal. Coffee, tea, and oatmeal. Every morning. It's the best oatmeal and fixings, experience every you know, morning. Like cranberries, walnuts, chocolate chips, uh, blueberries. You get the picture. And a huge common area for everybody to hang out the in. The living room. With hammocks and musical instruments and stuff to crayons draw with and, and coloring books and the most comfortable camp the most beautiful people i couldn't i can't imagine going back to fair and not being a part of that crew like it felt so comfortable right and at home yeah. and i i just want to like i felt like we belong there yeah, for sure i want to lend our hands to help continue what's going on there oh absolutely the the other thing amazing about our camp too that was so cool we got to know a whole lot of them is there's a huge kitchen that wasn't for our camp oh the main it it was the alice's restaurant yeah it was it was the in the kitchen for main camp that made cookies and just uh, coleslaw like just huge amounts of stuff to send down to main camp this is a a full-on like commercial kitchen yeah yeah with a lot of people in it very busy and they were rocking the whole time good music playing all the time in the kitchen mm-hmm. and we met so many of the volunteers for that by hanging that's where the smoking area was yeah one of them right out the back of the kitchen and we met so many cool people that work in the kitchen and got to hear so many stories yeah. and there i mean there are bacon bread puddings and hundreds of dozens of cookies of gluten-free chocolate chip and regular chocolate chip and sugar cookies and oatmeal cookies and and salads and making food for for the main camp and and, the, and, and then it's nonstop. And then next to that, they also right next to our camp was the was the barn where all of the signs that are made for the fair mm. were being prepared and stacked up kind of like it seemed like old ones yeah, that there was they a bunch put of out for decoration. And so it's so amazing. So Saturday rolls around and we go to the the front porch stage is where No Simple Road performed on Saturday and Sunday. And we meet up with LP Giobi and her parents and have a a huge hug sesh. And then we take the stage and interviewed LP. And then um, Mel and I and Apple, LP had to take off because she had another interview to do halfway through. And so we, and she was performing that night, too. Yeah, yeah. And so we started telling the story of who we are. I mean, I figured, like Mel said, if you went to somebody's house for the first time or, you know, you went home with your girlfriend and met her parents for the first time, you want the family that you're coming into to know who you are and why you're there. And so that's the way we started our our performance yeah we we kind of started Aaron started talking about you know him going to his first show and and that that whole story and weaved in how we met and by that time we were kind of getting hot and heavy into like the beginnings of you know um how our first date was at a mortuary and then we kind of ran out of time so So it was like a nice little cliffhanger for the next day um and then so I I do have to mention this because Right before um, Friday, well, on Friday evening, 
we met the MC for the spoken word stage. One um, of the MCs. One of the MCs because they did like four hour shifts and we'd, we, we had our little camp set up and oh, oh, okay. you know where I'm, I'm, with I'm going I'm with, with this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have our little camp set up and then somebody um, sets up their camp right next to me. And so right as we're, and it was kind of like dark a little bit. So I'm like flashing my light because I was like putting up my little disco ball. So I flash up my light so that he can see. He's like, oh no, I've already got it. And he turns around and he introduces himself. Um, court? Not court. Tomas? Tomas, yes. So he this was This is like, a um, grow your own, at grow your own media on Instagram. Oh, cool. I didn't know that was his. Yeah. So then he was like, oh, hey, I, I'm, I got Mel from No Simple Road. He's like, oh my God, No Simple Road. I didn't know that I was going to do you. I'm, I'm the videographer for one of the stages. So blah, blah. So we didn't know at, at first if he was going to be our videographer Tomas or not. Tomas is a homie too. But oh my gosh. So yeah, we just started talking. He knew about the show. Who He knew who we were. He wanted to, you know, meet us. So we meet. And then a friend of his walks over, Tizita. She's the MC. Again, we, nobody knew um, who was going to MC us or who was going to be our videographer. We had no idea. They were camped right next to us. They him. were camped right next to us. So we spent this beautiful Friday evening with Tizita and, and, and Court. Court. And then when they left us is when Mel and I got lost. Yeah. Well, we left them. Yeah. that's <laughs> We left them. Yeah. We're like, oh, we're going to go back to camp. And then sure, yeah. we got lost. But I just <laughs> wanted to bring up Tizita and Tomas and Court because I've personally for me, they helped to elevate my Oregon country fair experience and everything that we did at the front porch stage. Tizita's, I met her and I just fell in love with her. Like she, it was so open and vulnerable upon meeting her. And also she's so physically strikingly beautiful. She's got the most soft skin I've ever felt in my entire life Most beautiful smile beautiful <laughs> smile her voice is gorgeous and and she was like I've, within the first few moments of meeting her she was talking about a really traumatic experience in her life and I'm thinking like this woman is like perfect gorgeous amazing and she's talking about like a really awful awful experience, experience you know and with so much grace and class and I was like whoa like one of those this is somebody like that's always a trademark in myself that I always try to emulate to be as like vulnerable enough to be relatable, but also be strong enough to be leaned on. It, and she did it in such a way that I it was effortless. It was so effortless to see her talking about something that was currently affecting her but also with such strength and beauty and you know I, I was enthralled before we had ever left for fair and talked to people about it there were people talking about fair magic and i really feel like that what you're talking about is one of those moments of fair magic a hundred percent meeting tomas meeting tizita in court um amber Amber meeting Amber from spoken word crew Leslie and, and the like the relation like the instant relationship with those people that you can feel the bond mm -hmm. instantly with them I mean Amber we just were texting last night we're gonna do cheese mm -hmm. together and you know but anyway so but yeah I, I just I wanted to throw those people in there because we want to we're mentioned a lot and just these are the things and the people and the experiences that made Oregon Country Fair, magical, like, ma more magical than when we thought. So Saturday, we, we do our thing. We go we get something to eat afterwards and it's like hot and it's crowded at fair. And we, we all go back to camp and like, I think I fell asleep for a little while and we're just hanging out talking and, and Dan's like, okay, um, I'm going to go down and put down a blanket for the midnight show. It starts at nine o'clock which is funny all by itself. And, uh, <laughs> and we have no idea what he's talking about. We're like, okay, cool. Midnight show. He's like, you guys don't want to miss it. Like, well, the, come the, down. the only thing we did know is it's all the perform, all the performers that do like the burlesque stuff and the bubble, uh, Tom naughty, the bubble guy. Oh my God. That these, was these are people that a lot of the volunteers don't get a chance to see. So the midnight show has started, you know, long, a long time ago in the beginning to put on a show of all the performers on stage for the midnight show for the crew. Yeah. And so we get our shit together and 
we go down to the midnight show and, and this is, it's party time now. And, uh, we, we take our sacraments and we go down and, and sit down on the blanket with Dan and Jackie and like the, there's a hierarchy at fair and, and people that have, we knew nothing that we about didn't know shit about. Yeah. <laughs> and like, we're in like the second row. Uh, there's blankets like laid on the ground and, and we're in like the second row of blankets and like, I'm, as we're as we sit down, I start like hearing stories from all around us of how like this is my fortieth year of putting my blanket in this spot, and like this is my twentieth year of being at the midnight show of in this place, and and we're like up there with all the elders of fair sitting. This is our for, first, our fair. first fair. <laughs> and uh, and we started to okay, not real shade, but we started to get like sarcastic shade, like. What are you guys doing up here? Somebody must really like you yeah. to yeah. have to be sitting up here. And at first I didn't think anything of it. I'm just like thinking people are friendly, but then I started to really realize like, Oh shit. Like we're in a we're, coveted spot. Yeah. We're in a coveted spot and, and people like really want to know what, like, no, what the hell are you doing yeah, here? You doing kind of there? Nicely. <laughs> that's, nicely. That's, nicely. <laughs> that's where I first, I yeah, didn't feel like, like shade shade, but that's where I first started feeling you uncomfortable getting, you were that a little, evening. You could feel the, <laughs> yeah, I was, yeah. Like, oh, these people all know each other, and we just got like invited to the middle of the party. And uh huh, oh, well, and, I'm getting, and I'm getting really high really quick, and well, we I just can't know, remember anybody's name. Tom Naughty's, um, Tom Naughty, well, his wife, um, I think it was Shelby or Shelly, um, that was right behind us. We, oh, okay, yeah, I, just, I didn't know, so I didn't you know didn't that. know that, but like, she was right like maybe one row behind so maybe third row over just a, a little bit and so she was kind of part of that conversation and then this an older gentleman that had been to many 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 fairs he was the one that was kind of asking those questions along with them kind of in a a group but but i i'm friendly you know how i am yeah, so i'm we like were fine. yeah we were totally fine and we and were like, kicking it with all of them by the end we were g- giggling Thank God and laughing you guys were because i couldn't speak oh dude oh we'll get there oh we'll yeah. get there yeah, no so- no i'm just saying in this part of you guys and i'm hearing names and seeing you and i'm like well right, we, started, <laughs> we started talking to this one woman in front of us and oh, she, she was dope she was amazing and she was like into it she was like into she what, wanted to know like she was happy for us yes yeah yes that we were down and there it was it. that started well, to kind sort of change of. sort of but i we won her over i, yeah, I believe yeah, yes, we won I her agree. over i agree you know and and you definitely had something to do with it she liked you she liked talking to you i like, was having fun yeah i it, was i was when I, once I realized what was happening, mm-hmm. I was like, oh fuck, I'm in my element. Like, mm-hmm. this is my shit right here. Like, so. First of all, you're from fa- f- circus folk, or, fair folk. Like, well, that's your. That's one part of it. That's one part of it. But like, the midnight show is like maybe five minutes of each act. Right. And it starts and people are like yelling stuff from the crowd and, very interactive and, and and like the the stage is interacting with the crowd and the crowd is interacting with the stage and the two MCs Charlie Brown and Reese Reese is the son of the guy that the created artist. the steal your face mm-hmm. and i realize oh shit this is an acid test we're at an acid test and i was like so happy I was so excited when I, when that like realization dawned on, dawned on me, I was like, I thought I had missed this. I thought I was never going to get to experience this. And now I'm here. And that's when I was like, I'm all in, like, let's go. And it, the jokes on the stage were like an onion First of all, it was like the joke, the and political then, satire, and the joke under the, the joke, and then the joke that only the crowd and that person gets, and then the joke that that person's making that nobody else knows, and and it's the wildest shit you have ever experienced to be in the middle of a sea of tripping people, and you know that like the psychedelic energy has taken over the space that you're in, and it's being created. On the spot. Yeah. And, like, and the, there's like not a band to focus your energy on. It's everything that's happening to you, with you, around you, and because of you. And so it's all happening. Like I'm, 
I haven't laughed that hard and that much in a really long time. Really? Yeah, it hurt. I was almost hyperventilating at one point. That's when I had to lay on the ground. I didn't have that much outward ha ha laugh, but like it was just like a smile from ear to ear for me. It was just like loving everything that was going on and like kind of like I can't believe this is out loud in front of everybody right now. Like this is not like private or a secret or like a channel you turn to by yourself. This is like Happening, happening in real life in real time and everyone's you are a part of yeah it. everyone's hearing it and you're a part of it and it's not stopping yeah <laughs> and like at one point so like there's a center row that's empty with a ramp that goes up to the stage so like you can see that something's going to come from the back of the audience up onto the stage at some point and there's like pieces of wood with like that plastic caution tape mm-hmm. making like an aisle way down the middle and mel and i were sitting up against yeah, this, we're at the edge of the edge, aisle right and at one point the craziest fucking marching band you have ever seen comes marching down this center aisle and it was more people than 10 stages <laughs> could fit and they all start going onto the stage like all of them like a clown car. Like more than was safe to be on the stage. And it was just funny. And then when they got to the point where they couldn't fit another human body on the stage, it was still filling the entire aisleway. They all just sat down and became part of the crowd. Mm-hmm. I, I do have to stop and say that that crazy ass marching band that was coming by, they stopped. The marching band stopped to compliment my outfit. <laughs> they did. And yeah. I just want to say that out loud because that was my crazy ass fair moment when I was like, holy shit, the marching band just gave me a compliment on my fucking outfit. What? This is the craziest thing in the world. You guys know how I am about outfits. I'm. It's not like I'm crazy obsessed. It's just like it's such a nice thing when you put thought into what you want to look like and what you want to feel like. And then something like that happens. So all this is going down. Marching band comes. They're, they've filled up the stage like a clown car. They sit down. They become part of the crowd too. There's more entertainment happening. And I look and I notice Apple face down in the grass like completely laid out lengthwise over and remind you where we are. We're down where first year folk aren't typically hanging out. (laughs) And Apple is like face down ass up in the grass on like three people's blankets. Oh my God. And and I'm like, Mel feet were on Aaron's lap. And I'm I'm spun and I can't like, I'm laughing and trying to like, be coherent with what's happening around me. And then I see this going down and I'm like, Mel, you need to tell him to sit up. Cause I can't get to where he is. Cause I can't move. What's up everybody. If you're like me and you're trying to do better for yourself and what you eat in this new year, I have something really cool for you. Factors, delicious, ready to eat meals, make eating better every day, way easier. Wherever tomorrow takes you, be ready with pre-prepared, chef-crafted, and dietitian approved meals delivered right to your door. You're going to have over 35 different options a week to choose from, including keto, calorie smart, vegan, and veggie, and more. And there's even more to enjoy with over 55 nutrition-packed add-ons that help make your weekly meal planning even more delicious. What are you waiting for? Sign up and save. They've done all the math. Factor is less expensive than takeout, and every meal is dietitian approved to be nutritious and delicious. So here's what you got to do. Head to factormeals.com slash no simple road 50 and use the code no simple road 50 to get 50% off your first box and two free wellness shots per box while subscription is active. That's code no simple road 50 at factormeals.com. Take all the guesswork out of trying to do the right thing for your body. Fuel up easy and fast. Go check out factor. So then I go and I crawl, like literally I crawled on top of Apple on his back and I like whisper in his ear. I'm like, Hey, Aaron's worried about you. 
are you do you want to sit up he's <laughs> i didn't know about this till this morning they just told me this this morning Apple's like if he's so concerned why does he come down here and tell him is tell me himself <laughs> it's like are you okay though he's like i'm fine it just feels good to lay down and i was like okay so but i just at one point i leaned over to him like brother seriously you need to get up like you're on people's shit and he was just like no <laughs> <laughs> he was saying the funniest sh- <laughs> no not moving so 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 oh man th- th- this this all happened but as it i'm does, leaving camp it doesn't have to be so detailed uh, no no <laughs> yeah. d- d- just that i i well he took too much too fast i i yeah i took three drops of probably the cleanest most visual LSD I've ever taken in my 54 years on this planet. And it was full effect so quick. And, and and what they were just describing about the midnight show that I, I don't know how often my eyes were open, but every time I opened my eyes, it was just the most spectacle thing I've ever seen in my life and laughter. And then I would close my eyes and that would continue to play out in my head. When I was face down in the blanket, I was like seeing everything and it exaggerated. And, and and also at the same time was feeling uncomfortable and and trying to get out. I I thought I was laying like in a field where there was plenty <laughs> of were. room. Yeah, but not on people's <laughs> blank. Like Dan at one point said, "Yeah, you laid your oh, head on my lap at one did. point." When you laid and, on Dan, I was cracking up. Me you too. Kind of like you know those um you blow them up and then you can punch them and they go down. Those like. A punching bag yeah. balls yeah. Yeah. yeah like that's what you like sat up and you were like bottom heavy and kind of like doing that and then you like bounced onto dan's onto knee dan's, lap. <laughs> dan's like looks he looked over at us like with his arms like what yeah. the fuck and i was and just then, like what the fuck and then he just kind of like put his hand on your like shoulder and was like all right i guess <laughs> i guess this is right. we're familiar now <laughs> apple's laying his head in my lap so so it, it, we're hanging out Mind you, Apple has no shoes on at this point. He's taking his shoes off and like his water bottle and his shoes are like kind of behind me. And uh, I see him sit up. Eyes are like saucers. He looks at me. He looks at Mel. Now, again, we're in a field full of people. It's full. Asshole to elbow sitting down. And he bolts. He, he jumped up like... A dinner bell rang and then ran yeah, off. Yeah, somebody in, somebody was ringing his phone back at yeah, camp and, and then he heard like it. ran off into the opposite the way darkness. of the stage. And I was like, "Babe, should we like go get him?" Like, and Aaron's like, "No, he's a grown man. He'll figure it out. He's going, <laughs> he's going to the bathroom." And, and, and it, I was it like, took me, I, "It I took like, me forever to get the stamina to be." I would have been trying to in my head had been trying to stand up to excuse myself forever because I thought I was going to create a spectacle. And stuff, and I, I find that, and then I remember, and I, I finally was able to get the balance and kind of cohesion to, to know what I needed to do. There so was it, no cohesion, so it brother. needed it needed to ha- it needed to happen yeah, immediately, it was immediate, and <laughs> and like it was weird because it de- definitely seemed like distress, but also like he you can't pee. you can't really walk like that if you're in yeah, so fine. much so much distress so yeah. okay so aaron and i are still watching the midnight, show, watching the midnight show having a blast and then um somebody gets up to go to the bathroom and i was like i don't know babe i started I think getting like I, we, I started getting psychic spidey sense. i started yeah. getting pings my my spidey sense was going I, off i was, I was like, like we should go get to the find apple yeah. and you're like yes yeah. so uh, we threw on our shoes get up and then immediately what wait hang on Earlier in the day, what, when we were walking around fair, I think on Friday, there was a big phoenix sculpture in the in the field at main stage. And I was like, okay, you guys, here's the deal. If we get separated, if somebody freaks out and gets lost, if anything happens to one of us and we're not with the group, we're meeting at the phoenix. The phoenix. So the phoenix is our meeting spot if we get separated. And so we, Mel and I get up to go like find- Like our it. safety word. Yeah. <laughs> Mel and I get up to go find Apple and uh, it's mayhem. The, the lunatics have taken over the asylum. It, it's chaos everywhere. The stage is chaos. Yeah. The really, crowd is chaos. It was pretty chaos. There's fucking glow in the dark, juggling costume 
people on stilts. It's madness. Madness. It's just madness. And I'm like, okay, fuck it. We're never going to find him. Like, he is off in the ether for sure. And Mel's like, let's go check the Phoenix. We literally turn and then Apple's sitting there like a little four-year-old kid that is in timeout. Yep. With like <laughs> holding his knees, like his hands are, he's shivering. And no shoes. Looking down and just kind of like like lost and so we run so over sad. it was really sad we run over like apple apple and he's like no. immediately pissed <laughs> like he's like i'm cold and i, I need <laughs> I, I need a smoke and i was like okay like can you walk no <laughs> like oh i go do you need white bird yes no, i was he, like he, he said you said do you want us to get white bird and he goes white bird <laughs> He did. he did. And I was like, are you sure you know what that and means? And then he says, white bird. <laughs> <laughs> Phoenix and white bird. White those. bird, for those of you that don't know, if you've ever been to a dead show and seen Rock Med, that's where Rock Med came from, was white bird. White bird is the Oregon Country Fair's uh, medical clinic. It is a full on. Yeah. Um, Cut scrapes, psychedelic freakouts, um, broken you know, limbs, broken, heart yeah. attack. Yeah. Go to started yes. out the very beginning of the fair back in the early seventies, and they are, you know, it really is kind of like a VIP of sorts. It's more than like some, you know, wacko hospital. It's got a calming, beautiful vibe. People in there are so in cho- like on. on point and in charge of everything. We'll get there. We'll get there. We're almost there. So Mel goes, Aaron, you need to go to Whitebird and get somebody for Apple. And I look behind me and it's literally a glow in the dark circus behind me happening. And I I had remembered earlier in the evening from the stage, hearing somebody say, look for the white cross. If you need white bird. And I was like, all right, I'm going to stumble off into the glow in the dark darkness and see if I can find white bird and it really was just on the other side it, of it was the field. probably 50 yards <laughs> yeah. away from where yeah, i was, it was right there by main stage. it was so close but so i go over there and i realized that whoever is working white bird at the time is just as elevated as i am but like the most professional person you've ever met in your life and i walk up and i'm like you think that i'm like I, hey you don't know that that's I, yeah, true well, i'm like hey and she's like hey what's happening brother and i was like well Dude about my age, he's my friend, had a little too much too fast. I think we need your help. And she's like, okay, is he breathing? Is like, is he able to talk? And I was like, sort of able to talk. He's breathing fine, but he really needs your assistance. And she's like, okay, I'm going to go grab somebody. And she's like laughing and having fun with me. She goes and gets the coolest dude I've ever met in my life. His name is Freak Show. Thank you, Freak Show. Yes, thank you very much. And Freak Show is wearing a full-length velvet Mad Hatter coat and a top hat. He looked dope. He did. He looked so freaking cool. Like, what a cool guy to come save you. Yeah. And he's like, (laughs) hey, brother. You made me feel safe. Let's go find your friend. And I'm like, all right, Freak Show, let's go. So meanwhile, while all that's happening, I'm trying to calm Apple down where everything is either no or like anxious or aggressive and he's not like hitting me or being rude but he's like kind of running away from he's me being jimmy mike and like i'm like trying to reassure i'm like oh man apple i don't have a lighter and we can't smoke over here anyway so let's let's go over here for aaron he's got the lighter and he was like no see you can't get me a lighter and i was like <laughs> i didn't believe i didn't believe yeah i, I was not i, I didn't reality. know what was going on with him other than he was tripping really hard and he wanted to go near the porta potties to go to sleep and that's where I was. I, I'd never experienced before on anything that like not, not, uh, not being able to get back to reality. So is what I really wanted. And for some weird reason, <laughs> the one thing that was going to prove that reality existed to me was the one thing like you couldn't do anywhere there, like light things on fire and smoke. <laughs> was not allowed and play, but that was the thing, and I was so mad. Well, Nobody. Apple, I hate to tell you, but lighting things on fire is frowned upon most places. But <laughs> I, I not know, just at but, the but, fair. but yeah, not just at country but, fair. But that would like, like, like to me, that was like, like, okay, I have control. Okay, so I'm with Freak Show, and we're walking through glow in the dark mayhem, and we get back to the Phoenix, and fucking Mel and Apple are gone. <laughs> 
<laughs> and he looks at me like, what the fuck, dude? And I was like, I swear, man, like they were just right here. And I knew what I knew it. I knew that I, was happening. And, and so he, I had to like leave Apple that was acting really weird and unstable to go now try to find Aaron. Now there's three, some, three broken pieces all yes. trying to put themselves <laughs> back together. And so he, he's got like a, a light they use, like the, he's got a flashlight. So he turns on his flashlight. He's like, don't worry, man, we're going to find your brother. It's all good. And so off to the side of main stage is called politics park and politics park is where all the shitters are. And each shitter has a politician's name on it. It's the f- most greatest name for funny, a shitter funny place thing ever, ever on the planet. And so we, we start walking back to politics park and I see Mel come out of the darkness by the porta potties by herself. <laughs> and I'm like, there's my wife. And he's like, uh, where's your friend? And he goes, dude, why is it always the shitters? Every time somebody loses their shit, we find them in the shitters. Well, Why is it always got to be here? Well, if somebody's lost their shit, the shitter is where you would go to find it. <laughs> well, that's true. I, I, in retrospect, I'm glad that sir, for some reason I didn't go into the shitters. I went Thank God. behind. I went yeah. to hide behind them. Oh, and so, that's where I hit a dead end. I remember that coming to the wooden fence, and I didn't believe the wooden fence was real. I remember pressing my face. Like with everything I had, I was pushing against the fence because I thought I was going to make this fake fence disappear and I could continue going on to get back to like well, he camp. kept on he kept on saying I I'm gonna go to bed I'm gonna go to bed and I was like okay let's go to bed but like we're at the porta potties and You're it at stinks a dead end. it stinks here and so that's when I knew that I could leave him alone we were at a finally at a dead end I knew he couldn't go anywhere but trapped. in so I was like I'll take that you know I'll take that bet and I ran out and I saw you and so we we freak show we go back and so like the bank of porta potties ends and there's like a two foot or three foot space between the back of the porta potties and this wooden fence. And we walk back there and Apple's hiding like a little <laughs> kid behind the porta potties, jammed behind the porta potties in the fence with his like hands together under his chin. Like he had just done something wrong and got caught. He had like, First of all, we didn't say something very important because we were talking about the magic of the country fair earlier and how this you, was part of it. You kind of fall into meeting people, but that earlier in the day, Apple had referred to himself as Aaron and I's child, and <laughs> he, yes. was, right. he was on joking, stage, yeah, on stage. He was kind of joking about it after um, LP had gone. You know, we were telling our story, and Apple had jokingly mentioned, like, "Oh yeah, he's raised you know two kids, and now here I am, the third or whatever." Like joking, I'm I'm their fifty four year old kid, and that echo <laughs> was playing through the entire weekend, yeah. actually. It, yeah. it like you got to be careful what you say. It fair. set a precedent, and and so when we initially saw him like a little kid, we were like, it was, it, it just it never didn't seem like it was he was acting like a child. It it like from that from that point on that he said that it felt like the whole rest of the trip was Apple acting like a kid. So this fell fell in suit was like his even mannerisms and his behaviors and what he was saying. Everything was like no. I don't wanna. Th- you can't. Like it was. It was very like, like temper tantrumy and like you know just like very short, like a little kid that didn't get what they were wanted. And you know, so it's, the freak show goes over to Apple. He's like, "Hey, buddy, how we how we doing?" And Apple's like, "I just want a lighter and a cigarette." <laughs> and he's like, "Well." How Come about we take you over back to Whitebird and get you warm, buddy? You don't have your shoes on and you're you're standing in the mud. And I was shivering bodies. and I don't get cold easy and I was shivering and so cold. So we we take take Apple back, arm in arm, walk Apple back to Whitebird and they have like a chill out area, like a room, a long room with mats on the ground and it's calmly lit blanket and there's blankets and they, they they go and they get apple three blankets and he's wrapped up like a mummy and they come over and like get his information and uh and and then freak shows like looks at me and he's like hey bro can you you got this 
you, can yeah, you? It can was you Saturday your, night. They you, were busy. Yeah, yeah like, he had can, more stuff to tend to. Can you and your girl that, handle this one? And I was like, yeah, man, we got this. Just we just needed to get him somewhere safe so he wasn't going to hurt anybody or himself. And th- that's the only. That's when I first like started coming back and feeling safe again and realizing it really truly was the two of you and not some <laughs> and you tri- started to trust not us. some trickery is when he asked me my name like he, he kind of sarcastically was like name rank serial number all then and i just rattled off like james michael Apple, born panorama city california kaiser hospital 5 55 a.m in the morning he, he looked at me he goes okay he's alert, fine alert and oriented <laughs> times four good We're yeah good to go. yeah and then i was like okay okay this is real he was like yeah. apple was still like i still don't believe you guys are real 100 <laughs> percent and, and, I, and i remember i, I didn't until the next day really but well, i remember too when he said the humor is what broke me back to reality too when he he's going through obviously freak show it's very experienced in what oh, he's yeah. doing oh, yeah. and aaron says how long you been doing this brother and he goes oh two weeks he's all i can teach you how to do it too you want to take the crash court or something and i just oh, they, started cracking up was I, like, I said they finally let you uh stop being getting shadowed this is your first night on the job and he was like yep first time and i was like oh you're crushing it man so he takes off and uh Apple's like, I- I'm so sorry, you guys. I'm so sorry. I I know I hurt somebody. I was yelling at everybody. I, I, He's trying I just, to puzzle I, piece back everything. And, and I go, Apple, listen to me. Look at me. Here's what happened. You sat down. You laid down. You sat up. You stood up. And you walked away. That's what happened in reality. And the look on your face was like astonishment and relief relief <laughs> and, and, well, and then you told me that like there it wasn't that much time my mind that had been going on for like eight like an eight hour <laughs> shift oh my god like oh my like god. i that had been going on the for so long time disappears when you're in those states or yeah it's so trippy but you know we're talking about this you know trip or whatever the whole entire time it you know, you, you people to oh, I don't want to be a, have a bad trip or whatever. And I think that you, a trip is a trip. You can say it's good or bad. Sometimes you're going to be laughing and it's going to be fun. Sometimes you're going to be crying. You're going to be freaked out. Um, but if you can come back with your head about it, it's usually the trip that you need to have. So yeah, and that well, that, that's the next day when when Dan was kind of he's like, oh, I'm sorry, man. Like I like. Are you okay? I, and I was, and, and, and especially in retrospect, a week later now, it was not a bad trip. It was a stri- it stripped me down to a child. It was a difficult, it, it, it was like a, it was like a rebirth. And because I laughed so much that night, saw so many things, and they're still playing in my head every night. I'm dreaming. Midnight show is still reoccurring in my head, in my dreams, in things throughout everyday life pops up and and it was it was amazing so we were sitting in this chill room chill out space with apple and he has no shoes and mel and i are still tripping and we have to go find his what shoes are you talking about oh yeah whatever we have to go <laughs> find his shoes in the sea of people amidst the chaos that's going on and we go out there and Dan has taken Apple shoes. He's like, Apple must be swimming in my in my shoes, or or no, no he no, was no, swimming he, no, in no, my shoes. That. And like, his were tight. Yeah, he was like, I couldn't even put them all the way on. <laughs> and, right. and so we bring back Dan's shoes to get him back. He couldn't get him on. So I felt like I was walking in high heels. <laughs> Looked back like to camp. It. it was like I was, was already like, shaky, and then I'm walking in shoes that don't fit that are slipping. So around. I want all of you to picture this. Okay, it's about. One in the morning at the craziest music festival you've ever seen from the medical tent to our camp is about a 10 minute ish walk through the chaos and then about another five minute walk <laughs> over the camp. river and through the woods yeah. and down. to <laughs> No shit. And picture Apple with me holding his hand like a five year old and Mel holding his other hand like a five year old. And me acting like a five-year-old, still questioning (laughs) everything. And if they were really real and take me back to camp. (laughs) Yeah, it was. And so when I talked to producer Corey a couple of days ago about this, I told him this story. And uh, he was like, 
well, did it ruin your time? And I was like, dude, it was the funnest shit ever. It, it actually bonded Aaron and I even further because it made me realize what great parents we are. Yeah. You got a parent again. <laughs> like you did. It, 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 you know, there was a time actually there's been several times where we've been, you know, maybe under the influence of something and, and our kids called and needed some type of immediate attention. Yeah. Whether, they needed us right yeah, now. Yeah. Like they were tripping out or they wanted to get out of a situation. And so there is nothing like sobering you up, like knowing that somebody that you love is in danger or needs. I don't think we were sobered up by this though. I definitely got sobered up by it. I was like having a blast. I'm not saying I, I, it took it away, but I definitely like came to, to a place where maybe I was a little bit foggier, a little bit like lighter. So I was like, okay, this is what we need to take care of. Like when you left, I, it was on me to take to care of So I had to like get, get my act together. So by the time we were walking him back, I was not in any condition the way I was. I was a lot more alert I was and more so much fun. No, I, it, was it was fun. Like but a, it was like a, a choose your own adventure. That yeah. was happening. Well, so what I was saying is that it like totally bonded us and it like really did make me realize like, you know, we're made for this to <laughs> that kind of conditions. Yeah. We we are white bird. I would love to work at white it, bird. It, you like, two were rock stars, and I didn't. I remember. I was I, I was so worried about that. Was my biggest concern, and I I didn't accept it until the next day. After so I was like expecting in the morning on Sunday to come out dude. into camp and people being like giving me looks or something. Like like I I was sure that I had at the least offended people and made a fool of myself. And I was afraid that I that I was afraid I hurt Mel because I can remember pushing you away. Yeah. It's all, and you told me you're like all you did like like once you like yeah. put your hand on me and kind of pushed me yeah, away. You barely touched me. And we're trying to get in in my head. It was like yeah, <laughs> like like with all my might, like a little bratty kid, like get away from me. Your your energy was, was so that glad way. I but didn't you, hurt yeah. anybody. No. And and then after realizing I didn't hurt you. Then I then I became glad that I didn't hurt myself because at one point that was the way to prove reality too. I wanted to like jab myself with a stick, so it's like like to feel pain to feel alive. Yeah. Like and luckily I never did any of that either. And but it's like a, guys, that is an instinct to kind of like sober yourself up. Like if you're punch yourself or like jab yourself, well now you're the, like pinch yourself. Yeah, Am I in a dream? Yeah, it brings yourself, yourself back. To, but it was it, it really. Um, it made me appreciate all like all our friendship. It really did. It made me appreciate our friendship and the opposite. It didn't like ruin anything or, or take anything away prematurely. What it did was made me realize that no matter what I'm doing, that I can have fun with Aaron. Like that's what the and, thought was, was like, wow. And we, I, I'm just glad it was another <laughs> part of the adventure. And I, I love you too so much. You so had my back. If not for you too. I, I think I would have been okay, but I would have woken up out in the woods. You like, would have in ended a up bush. in somebody else's camp. Or yeah, I would have ended up somewhere or hiding in a porta potty Ugh. or curled up in a bush somewhere. Which actually would, happened to somebody else at fair. They they had to pull somebody out, out of a porta potty. Of a porta- they tried to hide inside the por- inside the poo mm-hmm. and everything to because they didn't have a, a night pass and thought that's how they would be able to stay in. So mm. next morning we we get apple cozy in his <laughs> in his bed we tuck him in Aaron's like i don't know if he can go on mel i i don't think we're going to be able to have him on stage and yeah, i was well, like yes he is he's fine and you're like I, i'm going to have to talk to him I, I, he can't be talking well, he like was saying <laughs> some outlandish <laughs> oh, yeah, shit yeah yeah i yeah, i was not i had to like was i was not okay so until Yo, well into the morning dude, the next day are you sure that you want to go on stage today like you're saying some fucking wild shit and you can't do that on stage it's not okay anyway i wake up in the morning after like 3 hours of vibrating in the tent <laughs> and then uh i go out to get some coffee and there's like maybe 15 people up it's like 6 30 7 o'clock in the morning i go out and get some coffee and and the lady that's doing the coffee she's like so heard about apple's white bird experience and i was like <laughs> 
what? <laughs> How? She's like, oh, he was out here a little while ago. He told us all about it. <laughs> oh, yeah, Emily. Oh, Emily. Yeah, I'm I like, Jesus <laughs> Christ, Apple. Oh, I, I woke up. I was still so high, and, and I was still hallucinating, And I, but I, I wanted that oatmeal. <laughs> and I wanted to be part of that. That was that was so fun every morning out there, kind of everybody talking about the night before. And I got up and went, got oatmeal, had the biggest bowl of oatmeal of all of them. It was just, you oh, couldn't even you see did, the oatmeal. Buddy. It was covered in all the different fruits. And I just sat there eating that and everything. And and I don't, I forgot who said it, somebody, somebody and I immediately felt ripped off. They were like, did you get your sticker? I'm like, what sticker? And they're like, when you go to White Bird, they usually give you a sticker. Like, I survived White Bird or something like that. They have different stickers. It says it's not a party until somebody goes to So I, I made sure after after getting around that day and, and all that, I, I went back to White Bird. And I wanted to go thank Freak Show, but it was during the day. And he was night guy. Uh, and I asked him, I was like, do you have stickers? or something? And the girl just, like, smiles at me. And she's all, hold on. I, somebody even said, did you get your foot foot bath? Yeah, and then I felt I felt like I, I that would have really been really cheated. nice. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that, that would have been really been grounding. A nice foot bath, mm-hmm. and here's your little sticker. That would like, have been a, a nice like a child. Yeah. yeah, let us give you a foot bath, and here's your stickers. You're a good boy. You want a lollipop? I would have been like. Hell yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Can I have an icy on the way home? <laughs> yeah. So so I I took. I'm looking at this as a kind of comical. We went and we got to see all these things we we read in the books and everything. So I mean, somebody had to go check out White Bird. Yeah, and so I took full advantage of I, all the things. I, had it, I felt like it. Everything happened the way that it was supposed to. That oh, yeah, wasn't like wasn't a bad. monkey wrench. It was part, part of, of the night. Yeah, and I was good the next day. I ended up. Aaron checked on me throughout the day. Was like Aaron was quite concerned in the morning. That kind of faded throughout the day because I kept on saying. I was like, I'm not going to say it. I'm processing it, but it was really eye opening. And I know I need to watch what I say. And you, you, it seems like you finally believed me like Maybe right about, about 20 minutes, before right we about took the when, stage. like when we would took the pictures, like right mm-hmm. around that point, like 15, 20 minutes before. And we took the pictures together. And then I told you, I was like, dude, I got to boil down to the, and, you, and it was yeah, all you good. Told me what you're going to say. So <laughs> we spend Sunday relaxing <laughs> Hanging out, we go do our set. We, Mel, uh, Apple, and I tell our story on stage. There was a really great crowd for us. It was wonderful. I had a baby yeah. clap for me. Hell yeah! Oh my gosh, that baby! <laughs> the baby started the clapping. The baby was the baby. The baby was looking into my soul most of the time. I was talking. I looked back and I saw that because it was right in front of the soundboard. The mm-hmm. family with the baby, and that baby was just like staring into me. I was like, right on. And then as, as soon as I stopped talking, was like, yeah, <laughs> like the I biggest saw the whole baby thing. It was the clap. cutest shit ever. Um, and then, like we said earlier, that evening, Fubo and, and well, the talent show at our camp. This is another part of magic. Because if we just say it like that, they're missing the magic part. Amy, Apple's tent twinsy that we mentioned earlier, that was the one thing that she was like, if you guys do anything, make sure you don't miss Fubal. And we miss Fubal. He comes out at like 2 a.m. when everybody's kind of like, you know. And Mel wanted to take, I remember that, you wanted to take me to Fubal because as we're making mm-hmm. it back to camp with me all wonky, Fubal was yep. performing. He was performing. Right there on the side. And I remember Aaron's like, no. <laughs> No, I get where you're coming from, but we need to get him it back. Is not we need to get him right back. Yeah. To camp. So then Sunday Fubo rolls. Probably would have brought me down. He probably would have brought you down. I I believe that. But anyway, he would have to push me away. I cut. No, <laughs> sit down, Apple. I don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> sit down. Quit touching me. <laughs> but we're so it's Saturday evening, or I'm sorry, Sunday evening, and we've performed. It's the we're end. Done. Everything's done. It's just the last night. Um, of fair and they're like already dismantling yeah the fair. Pe- people are dismantling their booths everything yeah, it's not as lit up things are starting to be deconstructed yeah. there's a marshmallow fight going on next thing you know Fubel makes his way to our personal camp with his little mushroom house and it's like <laughs> oh hey i'm gonna do a talent show for the kids and the adults here and we had been talking to dan and jackie and just kind of thanking them for everything and I had sat down and and finished this poem that I was reading or writing um 
And I didn't know anything about this talent. I think none of us knew about this talent show that was going to take place. No, at, our, we, at Spoken Word yeah, Camp. Yeah, at Spoken Word Camp. And the kids were all sitting down, all good, you know, waiting for this to happen. And we ended up taking a seat and it, we were kind of nice so that we didn't have to like leave our camp and go anywhere. It was like it was really so happening it was, at home. It was so comfortable. Yeah, so we sat there and Fubal shows up and... The kids are going crazy. Some of them are like heckling him. Some of them are hugging him. Some of them are sitting patiently waiting for him to start his show. And then he does. And it was, I think, what we all needed to see little kids being so dang cute and showing their talents and singing with their brother. And like there was this brother and sister duet that happened that I could listen to every morning Mm -hmm. it was the sweetest and most angelic singing that anybody could have ever heard and mel read her poem do you have your poem um and that i don't have it that's what it what that did for me too was, was because i got stripped down to a child the night before and I was still I, I still am a week later very much childlike reforming things in my head but to have Fubal performing in camp and with all these kids and everything I sat there the entire day I think we both did. I saw everybody like like I was had tears welt up in my eyes of like joy and immu- you looked like like the way I was I, kid, I could feel it the in where, wonder yeah yeah I was just transformed fixed by a everything that Fubal was doing and it was all and then then the kids talents were so they were so funny and cool the one the one of the kids did he was like the stand-up comedian and, and oh, man. all his jokes seemed to be like fart Farts. poop jokes that were you know for that age and and then then, then F- they'd all done their stuff and Fubal had enough I mean, he wanted some some adults to do their talents do adults have any talents <laughs> And that that ended it, it was it just so amazing. I so, was just so tearful with joy and and bewilderment. Yeah, I mean, you could definitely see it on your face, dude. So you know, it's a trip for me. Is like, I have to be really careful with certain psychedelics because I've had really really difficult trips several times, and some of them have left like psychic scars for me. Yeah. Like really bad ones, certain certain things that had happened to me in the past. And you you and I have been tripping together for 40 years. Yeah. And I have never seen that happen to you. And that it was a trip for and me. It ha- and like you told me told me, I you told like I, I know about your trips and I, I think if it wasn't for you two and Whitebird, I I would have I it it, it would have scarred. You you guys at Whitebird brought me back, saved me, made me feel comfortable, got me back home, brought me back to reality and tucked me in. Yeah. See, I, when that happened to me, I had literally tucked people you that in. were doing the yeah. opposite. Yeah. Like trying to. Yeah. That, that would have been up. scarring. And, and I remember like. I remember you asked Aaron, Aaron Sunday morning too. He's like, not, not, not being mean or anything. I forgot how you said, but you're like, are you going to listen to me now when it comes to some oh things? And I was like, like a little kid still. I'm like, it was like, yes, dad. And you <laughs> yeah, were doing I that understand. to me. And I'm like, I didn't do anything. Like I, <laughs> I'm not the one that needed all this attention and help. Like I know what I, well, I think we've all been there. I think that when, you know, you get to have a scar like that in your life, you want to warn people you're you want to be the bell ringer like fucking be careful but i'm not extreme like you guys i don't do the same things like you you've do. had you've had your moments babe. i've definitely had my moments okay. absolutely i'm not so, saying i never had okay. anything bad i'm saying i am different than you guys and it is the same rules apply but they apply a little bit differently to me because i'm not i'm not you guys that's all I can no, say. No, you're not. I have you're, a little, you're also I have a little, a little gung-ho. I, 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 oh, I, was I was recall you're part, part of the reason that it was three instead of two. Yeah, but <laughs> who knows what I would have done. Oh, my God. Would I would have done been, it, but I would have not done it. fuck night for me. That you, you had me and Mel, me you Mel lost. Mel I, no, thank you very much. I'm done. But it didn't happen. I'm moving out. It didn't happen. <laughs> well, I was that, that could have turned into a thing that would have been funny too. We could have been, then, then I would have had, then different. I would have had another child with me and yeah. we would have been like, and maybe we would have been grown ups. Maybe I would have made us grown ups. Who knows? Nobody knows. <laughs> All right. So wow. before we finish here, 
We're going to have Mel read her poem, but before we finish, I just want to say one last time. First off, Oregon Country Fair, you are the most beautiful, wild, insane, fantastical, chaotic wonder of human engineering and connection I have ever experienced. Yes. And I want to say thank you to Oregon Country Fair itself. Also want to say thank you from No Simple Road to the Spoken Word Camp for bringing us in, treating us like family, and showing us the ropes. You people are gems. Human beings that are absolute gems. And uh, we want to be a part of whatever you have going on all the time, every time, forever, from now on. So, um, yeah, that. that. <clears throat> I want to say thank you to... Dan Cohen and Jackie for making sure that we made it to fair for being our champions and for reaching out in the first place to no simple road and us and, and making sure that we made it to fair. We, we love you and, and thank you. Yes. And, um, with that, no, with nothing. Cause I had two things that was needed to happen. Um, <laughs> a couple of days ago I had asked the guys to make their top 10, um, favorite moments at fair because mm. there was so yeah. much that happened that was like hard to, you know, doing this, we just kind of like told the story of fair, but there was so many moments that happened that I, I wanted to make sure that we fit in. So, um, we're going to do our top tens and then I'll close the episode with the poem okay. because that seems a little bit more We'll do one at a well, time and, each. And we'd so. already read these two. We, we, uh, we yeah, we read it to each other. Okay. Go ahead, Mel. Do your um, first one. Okay, my first one. Top ten fair moments. Meeting Tizita. Okay. Tizita was the MC. These, these for are the, in no particular no particular order. order. Um, she was the MC that um, announced us on Saturday uh, at the front porch. And she is an incredible woman and she made my fare better by okay. being there. My first one is sitting with LP, G-O-B and her parents on the front porch stage. My, my first one was the midnight show. Uh, um, my second one is seeing Sam and Hannah. Um, this was a friend of uh, mine that I used to work with and also they used to go to school with Simon. So it was one of Simon's um, old friends and I got, I've got to see him develop his uh, hippie personality. His psychedelic nature. Yeah, and it was really sweet that he came and watched our our show. It was heartwarming, and he brought his girlfriend, which was another person that I knew and loved dearly. So that oh, was, was that who was sitting right over on the yeah. hay bale. Yes, yeah. those two oh, sweethearts. Okay, okay. Um, totally. So yeah, it's supporting the show and coming to see us, and yeah. So that was my second. My second one is the kids' talent show at camp. Mm. And I had uh, the second one was talk with LPGOB. Well, let's just skip the ones that are the front duplicates. Okay. Yeah, we got because I have the so midnight that, show. Yeah. Okay, so I'll just go to setting camp. Okay. Coming in the first day, setting camp. We said it earlier in this, being under that apple tree in Dan's family camp that they they said they've been staying in that particular spot for eleven years to be invited in, be under an apple tree. It was a privilege for no. sure. Um, my next one is a sing along at the rabbit hole with Amy. Yeah. Singing with her and doing that. Community singing. Community singing and exercising your voice. That was really in the morning starting off our fair days like that was the best way to start fair. Uh, sitting on a bench in the dark with Mel. So on Sunday night after the fair had started to be dismantled, Mel and I took a walk up the back right corner of the eight where everything had already been taken down. There was no lights back there anymore. It was pitch black. And we found a bench back there by the Long Tom River and sat and were silly together and Giggled. talked to people and saw weirdos walk by in the dark and had fun. Sat there for like an hour. It was amazing. Dark. It was great. That was one of mine too. So you had, okay. And then I also had Fubal, uh, the Ritz. Was okay. next okay. on my list, which we you you all heard us talk about that earlier. That the Ritz was fantastic. Mel, getting complimented by the Midnight Marching Band Saturday night. Hell yeah. <laughs> um, my next one is seeing my coworkers coming to see us. Oh, that was 
amazing. That was yeah. and getting amazing. to meet your coworkers. My coworkers they, fucking showed up. They hard. showed up really hard for you. Yep. Uh, my my next was morning oatmeal, which you heard us talk about. Also, the morning mm-hmm. oatmeal was like a congregating thing every morning to relive and listen to what everybody experienced the night before and what was going to happen in that day. Well, um, harping on quantum mechanics. Oh yeah, that literally has changed my life in regards to how I see the trans community. The um, the beauty at which this musician and scientist created this performance called harp. har- harping on quantum mechanics. It was probably the most insightful, sweet sounding, funny, um, eye opening teaching moment. teaching moment I've ever experienced. It was amazing. Um, eating a grilled cheese from cheesy wheezies. So there's a stand, I know, right? A grilled cheese, Aaron. You serious? Yes, I'm serious. The bet they have a thing called a uh, a dip and a sip. That's what it's called, <laughs> and it's a grilled cheese with a cup of hot tomato soup, and like there's a hole in the plate, and the cup goes through the plate that holds the tomato soup, and it was the single best grilled cheese I have ever eaten in my entire fucking life. And I'm a dusty old wook and I've eaten a lot of grilled cheese on lot. This was the best grilled cheese I have ever eaten. I will be remembering it for the rest of my life. And when we go back to fair next year, that's the first place I'm going to go there. <laughs> uh, my next one was be- being, if that's a word, sherpaed, being mm-hmm. sherpaed by Dan and Jackie. Mm, yeah, so the, the entire time the, them checking in with the showing us around the first few days, checking in with us, see how we're doing seeing the expressions on her face just everything about dan and jackie sherpa sherpina sherpa and us the the whole weekend mel um this is another dan and jackie thing um reading the original text from dan and aaron last night of the fair so apple was passed the f out at this point he'd been passed out i made it till like 10 o'clock yeah and was out done and aaron and i were about to stumble to bed but Dan and Jackie were still up and they were kind of just having a little conversation. So Aaron and I sat down and just got, you know, grabbed some grapefruit juice and drinking. And at a certain point in the night, Dan pulled out the original text that he had texted No Simple Road about coming to fair. Coming to fair. In 2020, and 2019. 2019. And so it was this long string of emails of Aaron and Dan establishing a rapport and a relationship with each other back and forth. And it was so ironic because we were sitting at the end of fair, like basking in all of like the magic and the fun and the craziness and the performances. And here we are talking about, you should really come to fair. I think it'll be great for you. So he would (laughs) read the, the D the DM that he sent. And then he would hand me his phone and I would read mine that I sent back to him. And it sounded like this Uh, crazy uh, love letter that like Dan's like trying to like impress Aaron. And then Aaron's like, well, here's a plate of cookies and a pie back at you or like something (laughs) just like all this BS back. But it was so in the moment, it was such a bonding experience with the two of them. And I was so grateful to be able to share alone time with them because we were all busy yeah. that during this whole time and and to just get that um time to sit and chat and laugh and really like get to bond was one of a highlight of my fair i i don't have any more i i have night fair okay but th- all the other Apple? ones that i have you guys have already said oh i just said my dad was just texting me um okay back to her um, though I'll just wrap up mine then. I just had a couple more. White Bird and Freak Show. You heard all about that. That did take that is a highlight because I mean it was it, it was traumatic. It was this, it was that, but and all in all, it was a good experience. And White Bird and Freak Show are fucking amazing. Yep. Mm-hmm. And then I had uh the, the trying on the chemise robe. Oh, this was the day yeah. after there was there's like these two grandmas that had this booth with a loom out. And this robe, it was like six hundred dollars, but it was so beautiful. And I, I was afraid to even touch it. And then she was like, "Come here, honey." 
like rap me and I, and I started stream I'm like streaming tears just they're rapping me in this and I was actually like people started coming into the booth she even said what's wrong she's with like Santa she's Claus? like we should have you here to help bring people in because then everybody felt then everybody came in and started like feeling permission. what I was wearing and touching other things and then the last but not least was the root beer float that I had oh, shit. Yeah. Dang. That, that was the first i think that was thursday night i don't even, i think it was thursday it was thursday uh i i was like oh root beer flow and you know i just i was expecting you know go up order a root beer float they hand me a root beer float like in a minute or so they're like okay it's gonna be about 10 minutes and i'm just kind of like okay 10 minutes for a root beer float you guys aren't that busy just like in my hand i'm like okay so i went and stood over and talked to other people that are waiting for their root beer floats and i find out this is like craft homemade root beer they were making batches because this was not open to the public till the next day so they're making the batch of root beer and it was like it was like sarsaparilla it was so rooty and root beery and like this thickness to it and then it had uh soft serve it was soft serve so it was like melting pretty quickly so it, uh, it, it was just it was the best root beer flow I've ever had in my life. Best root beer. I'm a root beer fanatic, but then root beer flow. It was it was my favorite treat I had the entire time there. Dang, I have um three last ones. Um, bumping into the NSR family at fair. Yeah, that definitely was a highlight for me. Um, <laughs> Fubel's arms. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that was a, definitely a huge highlight for me. If you guys see Fubel know about Fubel, he's so dang adorable and his arms were so animated. Follow him on Instagram at Fubel. Yeah. It cracked me up. And then the last thing was reading my poem um, at that um, talent show. I didn't expect to even share my poem. I didn't even expect to write a poem. And so it was everything was in the moment and I, I felt very um, inspired by being at the spoken word stage. And I felt like if I didn't read my poem, it would have been a, a like a offensive almost to not share to that, not share that because it, it came from the group. It came from the experience and it was the camp that we're in. It was spoken word. So I need There's to speak, speak my word. word. Exactly. So this is um, the poem that I what, wrote before, before you say it real yeah. quick. I just heard the memory of that because that night I was, I was still such a child. I remember looking at you, looking at him, like you were my mom and dad, looking at Aaron, like, what's mom doing? <laughs> And like, and like, and, and he's like, he, he's kind of like, I just, just why? I, I thought you were going to get up and do some like, da, 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 I don't, I don't know what <laughs> song and dance. But yeah. But I was like, oh, I was just transfaced. Like, what's mom going to do? And then you got up there and she did this. Soul and show. I was, then I was really just streaming tears because it's so beautiful. Hooray, hooray. We're at the fair where weather's hot and skin is bare. We all arrive with excitement in our soul. To be part of the fair, we anticipate a podcast with our feelings to share. We are virgins of sort, no previous view of what the fair has in store for our little crew. Shenanigans, pranks, melodic moods too. And please, even at fair, (laughs) take care of your shoes. (laughs) Much more is to come, much more is in store. I've even heard there's an invisible door. Into the void I go, into the void I jump. Another magical day with much more wonder and play. Down the rabbit hole we go and on the front porch we land. And we did it all with many, many helping hands. Volunteers, elders, staff and crew. Entertainers, vendors and the dead family too. We all gather here on these sacred grounds to share all we have with the people around. Ambient music can be heard here and there. It all is within the Oregon Country Fair. From the Ritz to Kesey stage and oh, the midnight show. It's just like Dr. Seuss. Oh, the places you'll go. Synchronicities can be found to the left and the right. And please don't forget to get dressed up at night. First year at the main and all female line up. It's about damn time. Looks like the fair's finally growing up. And by growing up, I mean out. More inclusion. It's true. So thank you for inviting the No Simple Road crew. And that is my ode to the fair. 
That was so sweet. I think it, there was a car. I, I can't remember. I think when you said the Dr. Sue, I think that's one of the parts where Fubo was like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. That's awesome. That's cool. He also did, um, when I said the invisible door, he was like, mm-hmm, uh-huh. <laughs> Is there an invisible door? Look. Did you hear that somewhere? Um, Might have heard it. Might not have. That's okay. part of the can't fair. Talk about uh, can't really talk hey, about that. We'll be back next week with more stuff and things, everybody. And uh, until then, what I'd like all of you to do is take care of each other and yeah. smile at a stranger. Take care of your shoes. Safety third. Hydrate. Who's got our SOs? And uh, we'll see you next year at fair. We love you. Well, hey, friends, my name is Zach Lupiton. You may know me from the band Dust Bowl Revival, but I also host a music discovery podcast called The Show on the Road. For the last five seasons, I've been able to dive deep and have intimate chats with folks like the Lumineers, Andy DeFranco, Wolfpack, Keb Moe, Lake Street Dive, Bela Fleck, and more. So guess what? After 150 conversations with some of my favorite songwriters from around the world, we are bringing brand new episodes to the Osiris Network. New interviews and intimate acoustic performances will be coming at you this summer. And which episodes are coming next, you ask? I am Zach Goody, the lead singer for the band Smash Mouth. Our band is called Milky Chance. We are based in Berlin. My name is David Shaw. I sing and write songs with my band, The Revivalists. Trust me, these conversations go some wild places. So subscribe to the show on the road on Osiris, and we'll see you soon. Okay.